Three factors can help you make safe choices when you're in an area of widespread COVID-19 transmission. Consider the location, the proximity to others, and the amount of time you spend there. Where does your activity take place? Open air spaces are always safer than enclosed spaces, particularly if they're small or without fresh air. Proximity to other people is also important. It's safest when there are fewer people around and you can keep more than one meter apart. How long does your activity last? The shorter, the better. Think about each of these factors and avoid situations where the risk dial is high. Small or poorly ventilated places and crowds of people for long periods of time. Stay safe. Lower the risk to yourself and others. Jai Hind students. Today we are starting the 13th chapter Direct and Inverse Proportions. So this is a very important chapter and also a very easy chapter. So here we are going to study two concepts direct and inverse proportions so first we can study what about direct variation actually most of us know what direct variation is it is just the name that scares us the name direct variation does sound scary here's an example to understand it one book costs 10 rupees so how much will two books cost two books will cost 2 multiplied by 10, that is 20 rupees. We multiplied the cost of one unit to the number of units. And similarly, 3 books will cost 3 multiplied by 10, that is 30 rupees. You can see that as the number of books increases, the total cost also increases by the same factor. This is called direct variation. Wasn't it simple? Let's erase this and form a table so that you can understand better. In the first row, we have the number of books and in the second row, we have the total cost. For one book, the cost is 10 rupees. For two books, the total cost is 20 rupees. For three books, the total cost is 30 rupees and so on. Now let us form a new row to write the ratio of number of books to the total cost. We will find this ratio for each of the five cases. The ratios we get will be very interesting. In the first case, the number of books is 1 and the cost is 10. Hence, the ratio is 1 by 10. In the second case, the number of books is 2 and the total cost is 20. Hence, the ratio is 2 by 20. Look at these two ratios carefully. What's special about them? Yes, they are the same. This ratio can be written as 1 by 10 if the numerator and the denominator are divided by 2. So, let's erase this and write this as 1 by 10. In the third case, the ratio is 3 by 30. This can again be reduced to 1 by 10. And similarly, in all the cases, the ratio will be 1 by 10. The ratio of the number of books to the cost will remain a constant. It is always equal to 1 by 10. This is direct variation. Let's understand it in terms of variables. Let the number of books be y and let the cost of books be x. This ratio will then be y by x. Hence, we can write y by x is equal to 1 by 10, which is a constant. Now you know where the constant comes from. Many students study direct variation as y by x is a constant, but have no idea what the constant is. If we multiply both sides by x, we get y is equal to 1 by 10x. This is another way in which direct variation is studied. y is equal to kx, where k is a constant. Remember, 
This constant can have any numerical value. In this example, if one book would have cost 20 rupees, then the constant would have been 1 by 20. At the end of this module, you will be able to understand when are two quantities in direct proportions. Conditions for two quantities to be in direct proportion. To find out the missing quantity when two quantities are in direct proportion. Applications of direct proportion in day-to-day -day life. Good morning children. Let us consider some situations. A family of four members consumes two liters of milk daily. A family of six members consumes three liters of milk daily. So here we see that when the number of family members increased, consumption of milk increased too. Let us consider a different situation. Sunil goes to the stationery shop to buy two pencils. The two pencils cost him rupees 4. Next week, Sunil goes to the stationery shop to buy six pencils. The six pencils cost him rupees 12. In the first situation, when number of family members increases, the consumption of milk increases. In the second situation, when the number of pencils bought were more, the total cost increases. These are the different situations we come across in our day-to-day -day life. We saw in all the above situation that changes in one quantity resulted in changes in the other quantity also. So we can say that if the values of two quantities are related in such a way that changes in one results in a corresponding change in the other, the two quantities are said to be in a variation. So, in our day-to-day -day life, we come across many situations where variation in one quantity results in variation other quantity. Now look at this situation. A lady prepares 20 chapatis for her family of 4 people so that she can serve 5 chapatis to each member. Next day, suddenly some relatives visit her house. She decides to serve dinner to them. There are four relatives in total. She started preparing chapatis. Now, can we say how many chapatis she would have to make for eight people so that she can serve five each? So, to learn about this, let us learn the concept of direct proportion. Direct proportion. Let us assume the cost of one pen is 12 rupees. Then, by unitary method, we can find the cost of any number of pens. Clearly, cost of 2 pens is rupees 24, 2 into 12. Cost of 3 pens equals rupees 36, 3 into 12. Cost of 5 pens equals rupees 60, 5 into 12. Cost of 8 pens equals rupees 96, 8 into 12 and so on. Let us put this information in the table as shown. What do you notice? So, to find cost of 2 pence, we multiply 2 with 12 to get 24 rupees. And to find cost of 3 pence, we multiply 3 with 12 and get rupees 36. Also, to find cost of 5 pence, we multiply 5 with 12 and get 60 rupees. Similarly, to find cost of 8 pence, we multiply 8 with 12 and get rupees 96. So we see that the cost of pence increases as the number of pens increase. Cost decreases if number of pens decrease. 
from the table we also see that the ratio of number of pens to the cost of pens also remains constant that is 2 by 24 equals 1 by 12 and 8 by 96 is also equal to 1 by 12 let us assume that a car uses 4 liters of petrol to cover a distance of 60 kilometers then by unitary method we can find the following distance covered with 8 liters of petrol equal to 120 kilometers distance covered with 12 liters of petrol equals 180 kilometers here also we notice that the ratio of petrol used to distance covered is constant let us assume petrol in liters as x and distance in kilometers as y we see that as the value of x increases the value of y also increases and also the ratio x by y is constant it does not change so in this case we say that x and y are in direct proportion if x by y is constant and x is equal to k into y where k is constant so consumption of petrol and distance covered are in direct proportion and in the earlier example number of pens and cost of pens are in direct proportion in general amount spent and the total number of articles are in direct proportion now let us see examples on direct proportion if the cost of 8 books is rupees 300, find the cost of 12, 16 and 18 such books. Solution Let the number of books be X and cost of books be Y. Let us frame the table for the given data. Look at the table. Let us assume the unknown quantities as Y2, Y3 and Y4. As the number of books and cost of books are in direct proportion, we use the relation x by y equal to x1 by y1 equal to x2 by y2. Here x1 equals 8, y1 is 300 and x2 is 12. We need to find y2. Substituting the value in the relation, we get 8 by 300 equal to 12 by y2. Cross multiplying, we get 8 into y2 equals to 12 into 300. Now y2 equal to 12 into 300 by 8. So y2 equal to 450. Here x1 equal to 8 y1 is 300 and x3 is 16 we need to find y3 substituting the value in the relation we get 8 by 300 equal to 16 by y3 cross multiplying we get 8 into y3 equal to 16 into 300 now y3 equal to 16 into 300 by 8 so y3 equal to 600 we have x1 by y1 equal to x2 by y2 equal to x3 by y3 equal to x4 by y4 we can use any ratio to find the missing value here x3 equal to 16 y3 equal to 600 and x4 equal to 18 now find y4 so substituting the values we get 16 by 600 equal to 18 by y4 so y4 equal to 6 to 675 after doing the calculation now let us go back to the situation where the lady prepared 20 chapatis for 4 people. Now let us find 
how many chapatis she has to make for eight people. Let us assume the number of chapatis to be a variable C and the number of people to be P. Let us assume the number of chapatis needed for eight people be to C A. As we know that the number of chapatis will increase as the number of person increases, we have C by P equal to constant and C8 by P8 equal to 20 by 4. So 20 into 8 by 4. Therefore, the lady has to prepare 40 chapatis. The length of the shadow of a 3 meter high pole at a certain time of the day is 3.6 meters. What is the height of another pole whose shadow at the same time is 54 meters long? Let the required height of the pole be x meters. It is clear that as the height increases or decreases, the length of shadow will increase or decrease. So they are in direct proportion and hence their ratios are constant. That is, ratio of lengths of shadows are equal to ratio of corresponding heights of the pole. So 3.6 by 3 equals to 54 by x. Cross multiplying and doing the simplification, we get x equal to 45. So the height of the pole is 45 meters. A worker is paid rupees 639 for working 6 days. If his total wages during a month is rupees 2769, how many days did he work for? Let the number of days be x. Money the worker is paid be y. Then x and y are in direct proportion. So x by y equals to constant. Frame a table. Now as x by y equals to k, we get k equal to 6 by 639. Also, x1 equals to k into y1. Here, y1 is 2769 and k is 6 by 639. Substituting these values in x, 1 equals to k into y1, we get the value of x1 as 26. So the worker has worked for 26 days. In this module, you have learnt that two quantities x and y are said to be in direct proportion if they increase or decrease together in such a manner that the ratio of their corresponding values remain constant. That is, if x by y equal to k, then x and y are said to vary directly. Direct and Inverse Proportions Identifying a Direct Proportion and Solving Problems What is Proportion? It provides a tool to compare the given information mathematically. This comparison can be of numbers, things or people. In particular, when one quantity changes, the other changes in proportion to the first. Suppose we have 12 pens which cost rupees 60 in all. Can you find the cost of 5 pens and 30 pens? What do you think? If number of pens goes higher, the cost of pens goes higher. If number of pens goes lower, then cost of pens also goes lower. Quantity of pens and their cost move in the same direction. If for quantities A and B, when A increases, B increases, when A decreases, B decreases, then we say that A and B are in direct proportion. Quantities move in the same direction. That is, A varies directly as B. We write it as A is directly proportional to B. They are not equal but proportional. 
the equality can be brought as a is equal to kb this is called the equation of variation a upon b is equal to k where k is proportionality constant we have a total of 12 pens when the number of pens a is 12 the total cost in rupees b is 60 when the number of pens a is 6 the total cost in rupees b is 30 when the number of pens a is 3 the total cost in rupees b is 15 when the number of pens a is 1 the total cost in rupees b is 5 so when the number of pens is increasing the cost of pens is increasing and when the number of pens is decreasing the cost of pens is also decreasing this is a case of direct proportion we write it as a is directly proportional to b let us write the equation of variation as well we write it as a is equal to kb therefore k is equal to a upon b let us substitute values in the equation therefore k is equal to 12 divided by 60 therefore k is equal to 1 upon 5 constant of proportionality is 1 upon 5 the constant k tells that the cost of one pen is rupees 5 constant of proportionality is 1 upon 5 the constant k tells us that the cost of one pen is rupees 5 therefore the cost of five pens is 5 is equal to 1 upon 5 into b therefore b is equal to 25 Therefore the cost of 30 pens is 30 is equal to 1 upon 5 into b therefore b is equal to 150 what did we just observe change in number of pens is giving a similar change in cost vertical entries in the table were all equivalent ratios value of k gives the amount of one quantity when amount for one quantity is known we can find the amounts for multiples of it which is same as change in one quantity is directly proportional to the change in another quantity concept of direct variation uses the concept of equivalent ratios method of direct proportion requires the unitary method let's go through some more examples to understand proportions When you buy books you spend money what do you think when number of books increase the amount of money spent increases when number of books decreases amount of money decreases quantity of books and their cost move in the same direction when you have to make roti you need flour what do you think when the number of rotis increase the quantity of flour increases when the number of rotis decrease the quantity of flour decreases both the quantities move in the same direction a car goes certain kilometers in 1 liter of petrol how much will it go in 60 liters what do you think when number of kilometers increase the quantity of petrol increases When the number of kilometers decrease the quantity of petrol decreases both the quantities move in the same direction the height of a tree and the number of the years what do you think when the number of years increases the height of the tree increases when the number of years decreases the height of the tree decreases both the quantities move in the same direction the quantity of food and its cost what do you think when the quantity of food increases the cost of food increases when the quantity of food decreases the cost of food decreases both the quantities move in the same direction these were the cases of direct proportion now dear students copy all these notes in your notebook okay 
so first we are studying direct proportions when one quantity increases the other quantity also increases when one quantity decreases the other quantity also decreases this is called direct proportion and we can write the ratio as x1 by y1 equal to x2 by y2 okay so whenever we can write the ratio in the form x1 by y1 equal to x2 by y2 it is called direct proportion now this is your first problem a table of values is given and we need to check whether the quantities are in direct proportion so what we want to do to check the direct proportion we need to find the ratio of the two values x and y so first ratio we can take as x1 by y1 so we got 11 by 20 now take the second ratio that is x2 by y2 okay x2 means the second value of x y2 means the second value of y that you will get 22 by 40 and when you reduce it will become 11 by 20. So you see now the first ratio and the second ratio are equal. Now come to the third ratio 33 by 60. When you reduce this 33 by 60 it will also become 11 by 20. So the third ratio also came equal to 11 by 20. Now we are coming to the fourth value of x that is x4 by y4. So when you do x4 by y4 what you will get it is equal to 44 by 80. When you reduce this you will get again it is equal to 11 by 20. So from all these answers what did you find out? Each ratio of x and y values is equal to a common value 11 by 20. So all the ratios are having answers 11 by 20 in these four cases. So whenever we are finding the ratio of the given values and all the ratio are coming equal to a constant number then we can say that they are in direct proportion so that is the answer of this question so hope all of you understood how to verify the given values are in direct proportion okay yes so now we are going to see more examples come to this problem if x and y are at directly proportional then find the values of unknown letters so here a list of values are given for x and y in between three numbers are missing that is a b and c now the first thing is you want to notice here it is given that x and y are at directly proportional so we are using this condition that they are directly proportional okay so since x and y are directly proportional as it is given in the problem what we can identify we can say that the ratio that is x by y is a constant that is all the values ratio is equal to a constant number as we saw in the first problem. Now what we are doing we are taking a known ratio and the unknown ratio which is having the alphabet. That is 10 by 25 equal to 20 by A. Now what we want to do? Simplification cross multiply. You will get A into 10 equal to 25 into 20. And next step 10 you want to transpose on the right side. It becomes division. Then again you are cancelling. You will get A is equal to 50. So the first value we got a equal to 50. Now you are going to find the next alphabet B. So again to find B what you want to use? You want to take a known ratio with this ratio which is having B here. So you can again use the first ratio itself. 
10 by 25. Now take the ratio which is having B. So B by 100. Again you do the cross multiplication. B equal to 10 into 100 divided by 25. Now cancel. 25 and 100 you can cancel 4 times 100. So that 10 into 4 you will get the answer 40. So B value is 40. Okay. So 10 by next for finding C. Again you are using the first ratio 10 by 25 is equal to C by 125. Now do the cross multiplication. 125 into 10 divided by 25. Again you can cancel 25 and 10 by 5 table. Again 5 table. 2 5s are 10. 5 5s are 25. So remaining 25 into 2 that is 50. Thus you got all the unknown letters. What is the value? Okay. So one more value to be find out that is D. So use again the ratio 10 by 25 and the ratio which is having D that is 70 by D. Do the cross multiplication and cancel. You will get 7 into 25 that is 175. Thus all the values of A, B, C and D are obtained. Now come to this question, a very easy question. The cost of 8 kilogram of rice is rupees 464. Find the cost of 14 kilogram of rice. So usually what we will do children? When 8 kilogram of rice is given, you will find the cost of 1 kilogram. Then you will multiply by 14 kilogram to get the answer, right? But here we are applying direct proportion method to find the answer. So what you want to do is here it is given like a word problem. So whenever you see this type of questions immediately you want to draw the table. So when you draw the table for the given values it will be very easy for you to find the answer. So here the two quantities weight of rice and cost of rice are the two quantities x and y. Now 8 kilogram of rice is 464 and 14 kilogram we need to find out take it as unknown quantity x and draw the table. Now when you draw this table it is very easy for you to write the ratio. So x by y how to write 8 by 464 is equal to 14 by x. Now you need to cross multiply the values. So we get x equal to 14 into 464, 8 will come in the denominator. Now you can cancel the values. 8 and 464 you can cut by uh, 8 table. 5 8s are 40, 8 8s are 64. So the remaining quantity is 14 into 58. All of you do the calculation, you will get 812. So thus 14 kilogram of rice cost rupees 812 understood yes now come to the next question an automatic machine can fill 100 bottles in 40 minutes how many such bottles can fill it in two one by three hours so one machine can fill 100 bottles and time taken is 40 minutes we need to find out in 2 1 by 3 hours how many bottles it can fill. So here you see because the question is asked in 2 1 by 3 hours we need to convert 40 minutes into hours first. To convert minutes into hours we want to divide by 60. So 40 minutes is equal to 40 by 60 hours. Now change the mixed fraction to 1 by 3 hours that is equal to 7 by 3 hours. Now we are going to draw the table. So whenever you draw the table, it is easy for you. What are the two quantities here? Number of bottles 
and the time taken to fill the bottle in hours. So number of bottles when it was 100, what is the time taken? We converted into hours, 40 by 60. And number of bottles, how much we need to find out, take as x. In how many hours? 7 by 3 hours and complete the table. Now it is easy for you to write the ratio. Okay. So here also you see when number of bottles is less, time taken is less. And when number of bottles is more, time taken will be more. Okay. So here 40 minutes and 2 on by 3 hours. It is very easy to understand. Time taken is more so that number of bottles also more. This is a direct proportion. So write the ratio 100 by 2 by 3. 40 by 60 reduced to 2 by 3 equal to x by 7 by 3. Okay. Now you know that denominator there is fraction. So you can convert into uh, that is transposing it will uh, be coming in the numerator. So this step we can modify as 100 by 2 equal 2 into 7 by 3 cross multiplication into 3 equal to x. Okay. 3 3 cancel. x is taken on one side and remaining quantities came to one side. Now do the simplification. Finally you will get 50 into 7 that is 350. 5 7s are 35 and 1 0. Thus what is the meaning of this x? In 7 by 3 hours number of bottles that is filled by the machine is 350 bottles. Understood children? So that is the answer for this question. Now we are moving on to the next example. All of you copy this example also in your notebook and complete the homework from exercise 13.1, the questions 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So I hope all of you understood the concept of direct variation and in the video 2 of today you will have to study about the concept indirect proportion or inverse proportion okay children so complete your notes very properly meet you in the next class thank you